I'm Brenda Caldwell, a.k.a. Dr. B. Welcome to the Hope Zone, moving you from a place of hopelessness and brokenness to a place of healing and wholeness, a place where hope is alive to bring you more peace, more joy, more freedom, and more understanding of your God-given purpose. Let's enter the Hope Zone. Hi, and welcome in to another edition of The Hope Zone with me, Brenda Caldwell, a.k.a. Dr. B. I'm so excited to have you join me for episode 43. Yes, episode 43. This is my topic here. I'm just excited uh, that we're going to be talking about five ways to deepen our relationship with God. Five ways to deepen our relationship with God. If that is a desire of yours in this new year uh, to deepen your walk with the Father. Uh, You're in the right place at the right time with the right vessel. That's Dr. B. It's about to go down. And this is your first time joining me here uh, in the Hope Zone. Uh, We're here to give hope in every situation. That is what the Hope Zone is all about. And what greater way to have hope for your life than increasing, enhancing, and deepening your relationship with God. I just don't know of anything that would make more of a difference in my life in this new year uh, than deepening, increasing, and enhancing uh, my relationship with God. Because he says, if you seek him first, his kingdom and righteousness, Matthew 6, uh, 33 says, all these other things will be added unto you. It's just amazing what happens when we make God a priority. So again, you are tuned in. Episode 43, we're just rolling rolling, rolling on the river. And I promise you, uh, on on the river of love, if you will. And I'm excited about you being with me today. If this is your first time, again, I'm excited and grateful uh, that you chose uh, to uh, come alongside me and 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 be uh, have have a life imparted to you today. So as we talk about five ways to deepen our relationship with God, let me go ahead and just tell you, you want to take notes on this one. I have scripture to give you. I have uh, five, again, uh, statements to share with you. Uh, And we're going to break them down. And I just believe that in this new year, you're going to be so thankful and grateful. And and if you're tuned in, it's because you do want to grow. You want to grow. You saw the topic and you say, oh, I got to tune in because I do want to deepen my relationship with the father. So number one is the first step, uh, uh, first way, if you will, to deepen your relationship with God is to get to know God, get to know God get to know who God is. Really, you want to take time to really in this new year, get to know who God is. Of course, that's through reading the Bible. We're going to break that down. But you also want to do a study. Do a study. Put this in your notes. Doing a doing a study on the character of God and do a study on the names of God. Do a study on the character of God and on the names of God. That's a great way to get to know this, this God that we that we say we love and the God that we say we serve and the God we say loves us. And, you know, I, I find that, um, you know, uh, many times we don't we don't nearly know God as much as we think that we know God. And that's why sometimes we, we're in fear of God. We feel like we've disappointed God. We feel like we've let God down. We feel that God's mad at us. God's judging us. Sometimes it's because of the church that you were reared in, the type of uh, doctrine you were exposed to. Again, it could be, uh, you know, from uh, just uh, maybe a particular Bible study that you, uh, you know, w- w- was a part of. Uh, it, it has something to do with how you were uh, introduced to God, uh, you know, and, and and it sometimes can come from parents. Uh, if we had parents that may have been harsh and hard and a judgmental and, you know, you know, uh, it's just very difficult kind of parents to please. It can cause us to think that God is the same way. And he's not, he's not, uh, he's not like man at all. He is not a man. So he's not like man. Uh, and he's not a man that he should lie. He's not the son of man that he should repent. Numbers uh, 23 verse 11 
23 verse 19, I should say. So God is, God's not a man. He's not a human being. So he doesn't think the way that we think his ways are higher than our ways. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. So God's always on a whole different level than we are for sure. He's on a different plane than us, but he's also uh, just, a, he's also so gentle and so loving uh, and it's so much to know about God. We can never exhaust uh, learning about God. So if you want to deepen your relationship with God, I, I, I encourage you. I really encourage you to, to, to fall in love with the word of God. Fall in love back with the word of God. Because in this word, it, has, it contains 66 books you know, 66 love letters, if you will, from the Father, uh, 66 separate books uh, in, in the Word of God that, that point to His love, that point to His, his, his living hope, uh, that, that point to uh, His great uh, power. Uh, it's so much in the Word, but it, it, it's so much peace in the word. It's so much hope in the word. There's so much love in the word, so much faith in the word. It, it's just so much in the word of God. And so to deepen your relationship with God is to take time to get to know him. In John 17, three, it says, this is eternal life that they may know the only true God in Jesus Christ in whom you have sent. So Jesus, of course, was God incarnate. He was God in flesh, walking around the earth 33 and a half years. He was sent on assignment uh, to die on the cross, to shed his blood, to give us direct access to the Father. No one comes to the Father, but except through Jesus. Despite what we hear today, despite the, the propaganda to discredit the Word of God, to discredit God, to discredit Jesus, uh, to discredit even the Holy Spirit, listen, it is imperative that we understand that, uh, that the love of God and to deepen our relationship with God is to get to know God for yourself. Not based on what your pastor knows, not based on what the evangelist told you, not based on what the prophet said, not based on what the teacher said, but to get to know this God for yourself. And I do know that if you dig deep into the word, if you make God's word a priority, you will come, uh, come out with revelation, with insight. You, you will get to know God in such a way that it, 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 you will you can't help but to weep because you get to know how much he loves you. Oh my God. Ah, how much he truly loves you. And in turn, it will cause you to love him so much more and appreciate and value God. In, in Jeremiah 9, 24, it says, let him, I love this, I love this. It says, let him who glories glory in this, mm. that he understands and knows me. Oh my God. God says, if you're going to glory about anything, why don't you glory about the fact that you understand and know me? Well, you can't glory if you don't understand. You can't glory if you don't know him. But if you take time to get into his word, if you take time to let his word get into you. Ha, ah, that's a good word. That's a good way of saying that. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Why don't we say that again? If we take time, if you take time to not only get into the word, but to get the word into you in this new year, I'm decreeing and declaring that you will be able to do just what Jeremiah 9 24 says, it says, let him who glories, glory in this. So if you're going to glory, if you're going to boast, if you're going to brag, come on, somebody, if you're going to glory about anything, he says, glory in this, glory in this, that you understand and know him. Oh my God. He says, glory in this, that he understands and knows me. That's something to shout about today. That's something to rejoice about today. Do you know him? Do you really know him? Mm -hmm. Do you really understand his works, his, his ways? Do you really? 
uh, is there room for you to grow? Hmm. Is there room for you to deepen what you know? Maybe you've got to deep, be deprogrammed. Maybe you thought you knew God. M maybe you thought you knew this, 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 this everlasting, omnipotent, omniscient, omnipresent, all seeing, all knowing, merciful, gracious God. Maybe you thought you knew him. Maybe you only know him a tenth of the way that he wants you to know him. What what are your favorite names? What, 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 how many names of, of the father can you name? How much of his character do you really know? Is it just a couple because you, you heard somebody say Jehovah Jireh? Or, or do you know what Jehovah Jireh really means? Do, do you know what Jehovah Sikinu means? Who, who is Jehovah Sikinu? Who is Jehovah Shema? Who is Jehovah Sikanu? Who is Jehovah Rapha? Who is Jehovah Roha? Who I could go on, on and on and on talking about the names of God. Because when I when I began to get serious about my relationship with God, I really wanted to know the character of God. And that led me to learn the names of God and what they meant. And it, it just, and, and, and there's a lot that I don't know. I don't profess to know. I've got, I mean, I got 50, 60, 70 names and I know all the guys. Mm -mm. I'm not saying that. Not, but you know, There are hundreds of names of God because there's so much to his character to know. We could never exhaust. And, and with, with the um, technology that we have today, it's so many ways at the click of a button, an app. I'm sure there's an app just on the names of God. There's an app just on the character of God. Of course, the Bible app itself is just phenomenal. It's just so many ways. It's just, will you make the time this year? Is this the year to make time? Is this the season of your life? You know, we 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 want relationships with people to be to be well. We want relationship with our spouse. We're praying for our marriage, and oh, we want the relationship with our children. Oh, we just want a good relationship with our our coworker. We want a good relationship with our friends. But there's no relationship. Oh, 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 oh. how many friends do you have that will lay down their life? That did lay down their life, took a beating for you to the point of death. Did your spouse? Would your spouse do that? But you want your spouse to do that. No, but the greatest, deepest relationship that, 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 that's ever, uh, the greatest love that's ever been demonstrated for you happened over 2000 years ago. So love was proven to you. Love got up on a cross for you. And in this season to deepen your relationship with that, with that God, with, with that lover, come on, with that friend, uh, God calls you his friend. Do you know where in the Bible that he calls you his friend? He calls you his friend. Mm. You, you, friend. Mm. When, when other friends may fors have forsaken you, God says, I call you friend. Why don't you search that out? Why don't you search that out for yourself where he calls you his friend? Come on now. To deepen your relationship with God. That's number one. Is to get to know God through his word, to really get to know God by doing a study on his character, getting to know God by learning the names of God. You can refer to God by so many different names. Oh my God, it's inexhaustible, but it's amazing. And it, it, it just makes me just admire God. He's so awe-inspiring, this God of ours, this God that, 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 People today that even our believers have waxed cold and have just like they're bored with God. And now they got to go do crystals and now they got to go get their palms red and get a tarot card. They've, they they got to go and do something else. I need something more. I need something more. I'm just bored with going to church. Listen, glory to God. We need the houses of worship. God called, speaks of prayer. He speaks of, of, of church, I should say. He speaks of, of the houses of worship and having church, but it starts with our heart at 
home. It starts with your relationship at home, getting to know him for yourself so that you're not relying upon somebody to be a, 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 a mouthpiece as a preacher and a pastor. And you simply take only their word and their limited knowledge because they can't impart to you something that they don't know. So if they don't know the names of God. If they don't know the character of God, if they don't know where it is in the Bible, if they've not done a, a, you know, a study, how can they impart it to you? And so we can't be waiting around on people, humans, to give us something. It's exciting to get the word in you and to get to, to know God for yourself. Yes, in this year, that's number one. Number two, to deepen your relationship with God is to spend time with God in prayer. It's, it's, it's spending time with God in prayer. And, and in prayer, of course, it says here, therefore, uh, in Mark eleven twenty four. 24, therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believing that you receive, believing that you received it, it says you shall have it. And it, sh it, and it shall be yours. And it shall be yours. Did you get that? And it shall be yours. Therefore, I tell you, just whatever you ask for in prayer, believing that you received it. Come on, believe that you receive it and it shall be yours. Mark 11, 24. And then, it, and then in Luke 18, 1, it says, men should always pray. Men are always to pray and not faint. So prayer is part of developing a deepened relationship with God. You know, sometimes I hear people saying, you know, I don't pray like I used to. I, you know, I, I've kind of stopped praying. I don't pray every day. I get that. I get that. I want to inspire you today. I want to reignite your, your fire and your desire to pray. You know, there's a whole lot about prayer and, and people do teach on prayer and prayer. I have friends that are very, very, very anointed to pray. And, you know, and I have one friend, I talk about how she prays and the roaches cry and out and say, what must I do to be saved? I mean, I mean, she has a great anointing to pray. Uh, and I have, I have a couple of friends that are just powerful prayer warriors. But you don't have to be a powerful prayer warrior. You don't have to have a great, great, great anointing to pray for, you know, an hour and 30 minutes and two hours. But, but to have a desire to communicate with God. At rock bottom, that's what prayer is. It's communicating your heart to God. And the Bible just said here in, in Mark 11, if you, if, if you have not really because you asked not, just, just tell God and ask God in prayer and believe what you're praying. He said, you, you, you should have it. It may not, may not come when, it may not come how, it may not look exactly how you pictured it, but somehow God honors prayer. That's why he says we should always be praying. The Bible says pray and pray without ceasing. Keep a spirit of prayer. Pray without ceasing. Have prayer in your heart. Have prayer in your spirit. At, at, at the drop of a hat, be willing to pray. Be willing to communicate with God. Uh, it, 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 and not only pray, but I also believe if you're going to deepen your relationship with God, you also want to include with the prayer praise. He says, by prayer, praise, and supplication, and thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. And he says, then the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard and keep you in Christ Jesus. That's Philippians 4, verse 6 through 8. So, so when we even pray, we bring the praise. When you pray, bring the praise. I like that. When you pray, bring the praise. You want to praise God because on your worst day, no matter what the situation is, there's a reason that, that we can always praise God. If you're breathing, it's a reason to still praise God. So, but, but to keep your relationship, to deepen your relationship with God personally, because I've walked with God for 27 years, I cannot imagine going through a day honestly, without prayer, without communicating with God, without talking to God. I mean, I talk to the Holy Spirit literally all day long. I have a teaching that's coming up in a few weeks. I believe you're going to really love and appreciate. I'm not going to tell you exactly what the name of it is yet, but 
If you really want to deepen your relationship with God, continue to listen to the podcast because I promise you, you're going to get stronger and stronger. And it, it just, it just enriches your life. And so this is the year for you to deepen your relationship with the father and prayer is the way. So if you don't pray on a consistent basis and, and if you only pray sometimes, or if sometimes you forget, why don't you just get real with God and say, God, I ask you to draw me back to prayer. Why don't we do that right now? Say this, say, father, draw me to pray. Say, father. Place a love in my heart now for prayer. I open my spirit to receive right now an impartation of the spirit of prayer. I receive it now by faith. And you all are just start saying, I love to pray. Why don't you just do what the word of God says? Call things which are not as though they were. Romans 4, 17 says you can call it as if it already exists. So all you have to do is start saying, I love to pray. Mm. I love to pray and I love to praise. I love to pray to God and I love to praise, give praise to God. I love to pray to God and I love to give praise to God. Are you with me? So it's just something about, you know, prayer and praise. They should go together. It's always something to say, God, I praise you for this. I praise you for that. You're worthy. I thank you for this. I thank you for that. That just makes you feel good. And it strengthens your inner man and it brings your spirit alive and it strengthens your faith muscles and it gives you the right outlook on life and it allows you to have hope. That's what the podcast is all about. Hope, come on, for every situation. And deepening your relationship with God gives you hope, gives you the ability to have an expectation for something good, because that's what hope is. There's one of our definitions of hope is living with expectation for something good to happen. Number three here, if you're going to deepen your relationship with God this year, it is living out. Number three is to live out of your love for God. You want to live out of your love for God. So you don't want to just live this year. You want to live out of love. You want to live out of the love that you have for God. In other words, obedience. God says in Philippians, and I'm sorry, in uh, 1 Peter uh, 2.15, 1 Peter 2.15 says, if you love me, you will obey me. Boom, drop the mic, drop the mic. He says, if you love me, you will obey me. You'll keep my commandments. We, we can say all day, I love God. I love God with all my heart, my soul, and all my mind. God says, if you love me, you'll obey me. You will do what my word says if you love me. But if you don't know me, come on, somebody, then you won't ever love me. So they all go together. This is the year to deepen your relationship with God. You want to live out of your love for God by obeying God. What are the things that God has put on your heart to do? That's how you show God that you love him. I, I remember how some years ago I went to uh, a brand new church and uh, the very first sermon, the pastor talked about loving your neighbor uh, as yourself and how one of the ways we demonstrate our love for God is how we treat our neighbors and, and how uh, literally we love the, our, our neighbors around us and walk in love with our neighbors. Well, I knew, to being honest, I had a beef with my neighbor and I didn't like this man. I really did. And I had an issue with him. I thought he was just kind of, you know, I had judged him and and made my assessment of him. And I really didn't care to, to really even speak to him. But I got convicted. Are you with me? I got convicted that day when I heard that sermon. And I will never forget, I literally went to his house and made amends to him. I bought him a card and 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 you know had a had a love gift in there a gift card in there and i just really humbled myself to show some neighborly love to him and then i put it in in his mailbox i went back to my house and within 15 minutes he knocked on my door and picked me up are you serious <laughs> he literally picked me up and he was so happy and so grateful and so thankful and i was so just touched by that. And I was, I was really impacted my life because it showed me 
if I'm going to say I'm a Christian, a follower of Christ, okay, and I'm loving people and I'm always speaking, I'm always trying to be kind and nice, but the person right next door to me, I don't care for, mm -mm, I was wrong. God says, if you love me, you'll obey me. You'll keep my commandments. That means that you'll treat people with love. Come on. You will go out of your way and you will do those things that God tells you to do. I knew that that message I was hearing was I was being convicted and I was being led by the Holy Spirit to go and make amends literally with my neighbor and show love. That's how I showed God that I loved him. What can you do this year to show God that you love him? What kind of act of obedience has God been dealing with you about being obedient about something, doing something that maybe may be uncomfortable for you? It may be a stretch for you. It may be something you hadn't even thought about, but you realize, God, that, that you just can't say you love them, but that you've got to obey maybe learning to walk in forgiveness, maybe being more kind, maybe, you know, uh, 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 you know, giving up yourself. I don't know. But, but God says, if you love me, you'll obey me. I love Isaiah 119. It's a, it's an encouraging scripture out of, if you obey, he says, he that is willing and obedient shall eat the good of the land. Did you hear that? He that is willing and obedient will literally eat the good of the land. So when you do love God enough to obey him, you'll be rewarded. Did you hear that? You'll be rewarded. Number four, we're talking about deepening our relationship with God this year. To deepen our relationship with God, number four is to live out of God's love for others by serving. To live out of God's love for others. So if you're going to live out and deepen your relationship, you want to live out of God's love for others. In other words, you want to be motivated to do things because God loves others. You want to do that by serving. In other words, to serve means to show that you care about the fact that God loves others. Where can you serve this year? Where can you serve? Where can you volunteer? Where can you give of yourself? Where can you make a difference? Where can you be poured out? God says, listen, I, I, you know, I love this scripture. He says in uh, Matthew 5, uh, Matthew 25 verse 40, it says, when you've done unto the least of these, you have done unto me. When you've done unto the least of these, you've done unto me. So, you know, he, he talks about, you know, helping the poor, uh, feeding the hungry, visiting those who are in prison. There's so many different ways in which we can serve that deepens your relationship with God because you want to reflect him. He says he has no hands, but ours. None whatsoever. The only way that they will know, they unbelievers will know that we are Christians, the Bible says, is by our love. So we have to, in order to uh, love, we've got to serve. If you're going to serve somebody, then you've got to have some love. If you're going to serve with a pure heart, you've got to have enough love for God to want to, to represent him to a dark world. The world is getting darker and darker. All we hear about is a lot of negativity on social media, in the news, so on and so forth. It's negative by, 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 by and large, we, we hear about the negative, but, but there's good in the world. There are good people in the world. There are kind acts in the world. There are people who really do want to reflect Christ in a dark world. I'm telling you, are you one? I'm asking you, are you one? This year, how will someone know that you are a true disciple of Christ? How will someone know that you have a, a true relationship with God? How will your family members know this year that you really do have a, 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 a serious relationship with God? How, how will your coworkers know that you have a true relationship with God? What will you do? What can you do? Mm. How can you give of yourself? How can you serve? Not, 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 not to be seen on social media, not, not, not to have to post everything, but just because it's God who keeps a record. The, the Bible talks about it. He, he, he's the one who keeps a record. Uh, he sees the things that we do that we might not know that he's seeing it, but he sees the things that we do that are behind closed doors that nobody else is seeing. We just do them in secret. He says he'll bless us openly, but living out 
of God's love for others. When we serve, when we give, when we sow, when we give of our time, we are literally demonstrating a deepened relationship with God. We're, we're doing it. He says, in all that we do, do it as unto the Lord. Don't do it as unto people. Don't do it for man's praise. Don't do it for adulation. Don't do it for validation. Don't do it to be affirmed. Do it as unto the Father. Do it as unto the Father. Serve as unto the Lord. That will deepen your relationship with God. Glory to God. I remember uh, Mother Teresa's, one of her poems, she's at least credited with this poem. Uh, one of the lines says, I died to the need to be thanked, praised, recognized, acknowledged, or even to be loved. To die. When we die to the need to be thanked, we die to the need to be praised, we die to any need to be recognized. We die to all of that. And we just, we just, we just want God to get glory. We want to show God that we love him by serving his people in some kind of way. I promise you that will deepen your relationship with God. And in this new year, I decree and declare. Glory to God that your relationship with God becomes deepened because you look for ways to serve. Number five, and we'll close here. It says, number five, to deepen your relationship with God is to enjoy the gifts that God has given you by living out of intentional gratitude. Oh my God, that's a word. Enjoy the gifts that God has given you by living out of intentional gratitude. It's a, a intentional gratitude. First Thessalonians 5.18 says, be thankful in every situation. In every circumstance, be thankful because this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. So in everything, give him thanks. In everything, be grateful. In everything, give God the, 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 the honor, the appreciation, and the gratitude that he is due. Because I'm telling you, it will deepen your relationship with God. God loves he loves us all and he's merciful, but God really loves those who are humble enough to be grateful and appreciative of even the smallest things that will deepen your relationship with God. I will never forget as long as I live, I was going through a, 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 a financial, it wasn't a, it wasn't a trial. I was just living by faith. I was in school. Um, and, uh, wasn't working. Uh, I was, uh, I think it was, uh, I think it was my PhD at the time. I, I, I really, really, really was operating in faith. <laughs> I was in faith and trying to survive and trying to get through school. And I remember I was in need of, 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 of some money. I'm sure to pay a bill. And I went to the grocery store, looked down on the ground and I spotted a quarter. I picked up that quarter and I'm here to tell you, I was so grateful for that quarter. I was praising God all throughout the store for a quarter. Like I had really found some money. I was, I just, it, I just had such appreciation and gratitude for this quarter. I couldn't even help it. I was, God, thank you for this quarter. It's like, I could see God just, just, Seeing that daughter, if you can just be grateful for a quarter, you know, I, I, I can, I can give you more, but I just want to see how will you handle a quarter? True story. The same day I went to my mailbox and I had a check for $2,500 and I believe like 90 something cent. I had a, a check for just a little bit above $2,500 the same day. I thank God for a quarter. What is the markup from 25 cent to $2,500? I think it's a thousand percent or something. I am so thankful to the living God in that moment that I had a chance to be so grateful for a quarter that I experienced a miracle the same day. Only God, only God. You're talking about deepening my relationship with God. I'm telling you, I've had some experiences that have deepened my relationship with God. And one of the things that I know that has made such a difference in my life is purposely, purposely, intentionally 
living a life of gratitude. Gratitude and humility, I believe, are two perfumes or colognes that bless the nostrils of God. I just truly believe that. He hates pride. Humility is the opposite of pride. He hates complaining. Gratitude is the opposite of complaining. So when you put it together, it makes sense. So stay grateful and stay humble and choose this year to deepen your relationship with the Father because there's no other relationship that will change your life. There's no other relationship that will give you the joy that springs up from within. He says, in my presence is the fullness of joy. There's no other relationship that will bring you peace that surpasses all understanding. There's no other relationship that fulfills you on the innermost, in the innermost part of your being and gives you a contentment. There's no other relationship. You don't have to perform. You don't have to be good. You don't have to be perfect. You don't have to get it all right. You, you, you can fall short and, and mess up and, 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 and you can miss the mark. And he still loves you unconditionally. So in this new year, as you even think about relationships, as you even think about what relationships you want to focus on, focus on the relationship with the greatest lover, the greatest friend, the greatest father, the greatest judge, the greatest king, the greatest one in the entire world who loves you so much that in incarnate fashion became a man, got on a cross, shed his blood, laid down his life so that you can live and have life and have life abundantly to the full. Does he not deserve your heart, your attention, your focus? Does he not deserve the best of what you have? Does he not deserve all of you so that you can then be more and give more to those around you? In this year, purpose in your heart to deepen your relationship with God. Well, that's today's episode, episode number 43, five ways to deepen your relationship with God. I am so thankful that you are partnering with the podcast. And, and when I say partnering, I mean, just by tuning in and listening and sharing, uh, you know, uh, subscribing those things. I, I've, I'm, I'm just more so now focused on just delivering the word that God has given me and trusting God with the results. If you want to know more about the works of Dr. B, go to my website at drbempowers.com, drbempowers.com. You can support uh, the campaign, which is called Suicide is Not an Option. God has raised me up to take the message of hope and healing and encouragement uh, to many young people and uh, those around the world who are in need of hope because suicide is a very serious uh, issue that is affecting our society today. So that is a campaign that I'm uh, called to this year. So I appreciate it. If you want to support it, uh, feel free to do so at my website. I am so thankful and grateful that we had this time today. And until next time, I always love to say in a world that's full of darkness, there is still a reason to have hope. So I want you to do this. Hold on to hope like it's a piece of rope. Until next time. I'm so glad you made it to the end of the podcast. If the Hope Zone is making a positive difference in your life, please subscribe to the show so you don't miss the next episode. Leave a review and most of all, share it with your friends. And remember, from your worst day to your best day, there's hope in every situation.